What's up, everybody? This is Battlefield Jail 97. We're giving you his final video of E3. Finally, I've been trying to get this through days. But now I'm going to give you my final thoughts, final opinion, final review on E3 2013. And all I have to say to describe my thoughts on E3 2013 in one sentence is that E3 2013 was the best E3 we have had in a long time. The surprises, the not surprises, the backlash, the <laughs> the praises, everything about it was just such a storm of gimps from NeoGAF. It's just holy shit. <laughs> this had to be the best one in my eyes, in my opinion, to go for it all. So yeah, this one thing to describe E3 2013, it might be because of new consoles in the Ryzen for the next gen Xbox and the next gen PlayStation and you know, sort of things like that. So anyhow, to complete this final video of mine for E3 2013 in the review, I'm going to have to state which console manufacturer took first, second, and third place. I'm going to explain the position they are, I'm going to explain why they're in that position. And you know, at the end of the video, I'm going to conclude, just repeat whatever the fuck it may be. So for how it is, number one could be an obvious choice, but Sony won first place. Second would be Nintendo, and third would be Microsoft. Now, let me state this out of the way of why I picked Sony, which might be the most obvious choice of any of you picked Sony as well to be number one, to be the winner of E3 2013. Just like how they did with E3 2012, it's not like what they did that much like Microsoft, but they, okay, how am I going to explain this up? Like how Sony didn't do that much in their press conference, unlike Microsoft, which they were showing new things and showing some things out of it, even though it pissed so much out of people, especially me. Oh, the rage and anger on that fucking console. Like, hey, you know what? Let me put the rage down. Out of what it was, the big surprises, like showcasing indie developers and their titles on stage, all of their titles that are going to be coming for the PlayStation 4 was such a big, startling revelation. It's like, holy shit, these indie developers are getting the spotlight. I mean, yeah, Jonathan Blow, who is doing The Witness for the PS4, Windows, and iOS, was showcased out of the February reveal of the PS4, but for how it is, Show, having all of these other developers who are indies showcasing on stage made the PS4 not like the Xbox One where it's just going to be a triple A sort of environmental machine, but in a a triple A machine that can do less tri less triple A games from the indie developers for the PS4. So that was a good surprise. Can't wait to play Mercenaries King in the PS4 as well as support that for the PC. Steam sales people, the Steam sales. <laughs> And what was the second one? The second one was the Square Enix Atomic Nuke Bomb surprises of Final Fantasy XV, which used to be now Final Fantasy vs. Thirteen, and Kingdom Hearts fucking three. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts three, man. I've waited. I thought Kingdom Hearts three would not come in my lifetime, but Kingdom Hearts three. <laughs> Kingdom Hearts three. And I don't give a shit if it's multi-platform for the Xbox One. I don't give a shit. That thing will still be a PlayStation exclusive to my heart. And for how it is, I doubt any Xbox owners will know what the fuck is going to happen with the Kingdom Hearts storyline. So yeah, go for that. And also Final Fantasy XV. Think that's going to work for all that shit. And what was the third one? The third one. Um, yeah, the third one might have been the Jack Trenton speech of not having all this restrictive bullshit that Microsoft's Xbox One console is going to be and having all this crowd cheering and enthusiasm out of the whole thing and from how many people were saying that it's kind of sad that we're cheering for something that has basically been a fundamental feature out of console gaming and yeah I agree it is kind of sad that we have to cheer for this whole thing but you have to remember and you have to experience this as I am and most of any other gamers we have gotten so used out of the seventh generation of console of how companies can just shove up a dildo up our asses and how they can just abuse us through their positions of power with on disc DLC, DLC, all this other kind of bullshit policy that they've been doing, and online passes. Fuck you, EA, for that kind of shit. And for how they've been doing out of it, we gotten so used to it, and we just, we just wanted to clinch into our so-called rights that we were going for. And just been hearing the hearing Sony 
reclaiming their support for the used game market and they're not going to do all this restrictive bullshit. It's like hearing, um, what was it, Columbia Pictures or Sony Pictures go out in some kind of movie trade and show with some of their fans, but most of their stockholders, and say out loud on stage, Oh yeah, we allow people to sneak into the movie theaters to see our movies without paying it, and to, you know, bootleg the movie by using their camcorders to record it. It was just a fucking startle revelation. Like, and for how Sony went all out out of Microsoft and their Xbox One, basically reminds me of how S Sega used to did the what Genesis does when Nintendo against Nintendo. And you know, another thing to say, it's kind of hilarious how Sega and Nintendo are now, you know, sleeping in bed together with all this partnership with Sonic and Nintendo consoles, but anyhow, going back to Sony and all that other kind of shit. So yeah, while it is sad that all of us have to cheer for the whole used game market, it's just still a startling revelation to see how it just went all punched out on Microsoft and all that other kind of shit. And you know, even though they didn't show that much exclusives, even though there was more of it than Xbox One did, we all agree we're going to buy the multi-platforms only for PlayStation 4, and only the minority is going to get it for Xbox One. So, yeah, that might have been the reason why I picked Sony as number one. The surprises they had, the surprises like games we already know, but showing so many new stuff to come out of it to make us all jizz and fucking excited. And, you know, the punch out of Microsoft that they fucking deserve, by the way, for how much their arrogance and their ignorance and their bullshit, the PR management, the fuck, okay, calm down. <laughs> calm down. You, you, just, you can't let the anger rage towards you. So anyhow, that's why I picked Sony number one for E3 2013. Second, of course, is Nintendo. Now, many of Nintendo's critics might ask me why I picked Nintendo for number two and the list and not Microsoft. Because of one thing. Showcasing games, bang, 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 just like how Sony did. But for how it is, they didn't go stop out of fillers that we may not give a shit about. Like, you know, doing the Vita and doing all this kind of bullshit. Like, come on, we really needed a trailer for The Last of Us? The Last of Us is going to come already. Why the fuck do we give a shit? Not to discredit The Last of Us. Eh? From what I'm hearing, it's sounding like the Citizen Kane of gaming. <laughs> that might be a stretch, but, you know, I'm kind of a drink and I'm going to play The Last of Us more than Bioshock Infinite. Yeah, I know, I said that. Fuck it. And, fuck, I'm trying to go back into my mindset. It's so hot in this place. And... Yeah, there was no media bullshit talking out of Nintendo going like, you know, media this, entertainment that, or whatever the fuck it may be. It was just games, 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 and then showcasing next-gen sort of tech out of Mario Kart 8 and Smash Brothers. Holy fucking shit, Smash Brothers and, and then going for Mega Man. <laughs> Mega Man, it was so beautiful. Oh, shit, sorry. Yeah, drinking something else. But anyhow, going from the whole thing of, you know, Mega Man, Smash Brothers, and all that other shit. But the problem that I did have with Nintendo's Direct, not conference, I have to report that, Nintendo's Direct, was that there wasn't that much surprises on, like, how Sony did with, you know, the indie developers, and, you know, uh, you know, Final Fantasy 15 and Kingdom Hearts 3, and then the bullshit, we hit you in the ass, Microsoft sort of tactics. It was just... Nintendo being Nintendo and just like, don't give in a shit what the competition has out of them. And from how, after the direct and, you know, further interviews with other websites, if any of you got these sort of interviews, Reggie Fisame, you know, the guy who did my body is ready sort of thing, he stated in an interview, I think maybe from Polygon, or no, not Polygon, he stated in like in an interview that like, if developers and publishers don't want their games to be traded in quick and used to pre-owned game market, then they should make better games. I call that a burn. <laughs> and you know what? He's true. And for what he was stating that our games of Nintendo have, don't, are not traded in the most unlike any of their other competitors is because we put so much time and effort into the games and our players just don't want to trade in the game for all the memories and the experience comes. And it's right. From how you see it right here, I could just trade in Smash Bros. Ball if I wanted to, but I don't want to. Even though I don't play this game that much anymore, I, the memories and the replayability of the game is just also the more beautiful. And Mario Kart Wii, Super Mario Bros. Wii, and Super Mario Bros. Wii, you get the whole picture. You got the whole picture. And he is right for the whole thing. And then after Reggie Fisume, Shigeru Miyamoto, the god of gaming, said in an interview with him that that game ownership should be about a toy ownership, and for how it is, he stated it to be very true. And I wish, I wish publishers 
who were fucking greedy or wasn't into this sort of cringing out of the stockholders that they would just go with Shigeru Miyamoto's mindset. And that's how Nintendo's games are great and you don't trade in that much of them. So yeah, I put Nintendo up there because the games, 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 and games, and then, you know, the criticism of not having surprises out of Sony's conference. Whatever. At least they still had some games that were, you know, I'm going to get for the Wii U. Smash Brothers, the X for all Monolith Soft, Bayonetta 2, Mario Kart 8, Wind Waker HD, and also, I wanted to say this again, I'm going to be putting my hands on to looks on impressions out of those four games that I got to see one played and experience out of the Nintendo experience event, and best buy I'm going to do after this video, if you kind of wonder why. But you can see the gameplay footages that I already uploaded on the channel of mine. So if you want to, you can see and see how the controls are for the players we played in. So, yeah, anyhow. Sony first, Nintendo second, and third is Microsoft. Now, why did I put Microsoft second? Now, many people can say I'm biased because of the whole Xbox One fiasco and all this coming out of the whole system and all this damage control and all this other fucking bullshit that I want to cringe over Microsoft for their fucking bullshit. Sorry, the cursing is stop out of there. But I will state this. Microsoft's E3 2013 press conference was the best one they had in a long time because one, they didn't focus on Kinect, they didn't have stupid fucking child actors going on stage. Hey look, Peter Pan! Oh no, Captain Oak! They have to go on a payload! And all that other kind of shit that we just face bomb on the fucking live streams, man. Oh god, <laughs> we'll face bomb it. Thank god we didn't have any no Usher stage and oh baby, baby, oh! None of that kind of shit. It was just, the, just like how they promised after the failed Xbox One reveal. You had your games, 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 games. But the one thing that I was disappointed with the most, and it might cloud the entire conference, but they just didn't address any of the issues they had. Like, if any of you remember before, then Microsoft was going to have, like, a pre-E3 conference where they were going to discuss, like, the the good, the bad, and the ugly, or whatever the concerns may be out of the Xbox One, but, you know, since Microsoft just wants to dodge any fucking negative bullets they have out of their next-gen Xbox console, the Xbox One, they just canceled their pre-conference E3, and just went with their E3 conference. And, you know, the gimmicky smart glass movements, having exclusive titles for bullshit use, and misleading the fucking consumers out of Titanfall being exclusive to Xbox One, which I had a freaking fight over Twitter out of a stupid Microsoft fucking Xbox fanboy. Two fanboys, mind you. And they were like, no, but, you know, PCs are not consoles. Or like, you know, it is a console exclusive in the Xbox brand. And that they count PC as they because, you know, it was Microsoft. Thing. No, fuck you. And fuck the person who was saying that meatly misleading bullshit that Titanfall was Xbox One exclusive. Fuck you. Because I had to deal with this bullshit. And miscorrecting people. That was a goddamn mindset to go out of. But that's the problem that I had out of the Microsoft conference. It was okay. They did show some stupid bullshit that I was cringeworthy, like the Project Spark sort of thing that they ruined with, you know, the the guy who's just doing cringeworthy lines. It's like, let's rock and roll, buddy. <laughs> Go out of shit. And, you know, having that offensive fucking fight in the live stream with Killer Instinct is like, Go ahead. It's going to be over soon and all that other shit. It's like, come on. We already know what it's going to fucking play. And you just have to ruin that shit. And I just hated that the most. But the one thing that I was disappointed out of that Microsoft conference is they didn't even tell. They didn't even concern the people who were, you know, wanted to buy an Xbox One. But they didn't want to because of the DRM restricted bullshit. And then after that, interviews with PR executives and spokesmen. Damage controlling. Not even you know, asking, not even telling the hard earned question, the answering them. Major Nelson, you lost my respect, Major Nelson. When you, you were dodging questions out of Angry Joe's interview, and to be honest, even though I, I, I'm just disappointed of how Major Nelson was just doing that at the interview, dodging questions that he should be answering real questions if we the consumers could even support this future plan of digital distribution for the xbox one but let me tell you something microsoft you can't just shove digital distribution down gamers console gamers throats you have to let them embrace that out of their own terminal ways and you know what i might do a video of how i got into 
you know, digital distribution and all that kind of shit, so I can illustrate why the fuck it's so worn out of Microsoft's doing. So yeah, negatives out of the conference from the Microsoft conference for E3 2013 was dodging the questions and do their pre-conference, whatever the fuck it may be, and just taking some things and make them so exclusive and then, you know, fucking Capcom and Call of Duty appeal for Dead Rising 3 and all that other kind of shit. So, yeah, that's all I have to say. I evaluated why I put them in the position they were, and that's the end of the video. Do you agree with my thoughts? Do you agree with my decision of Sony being first, Nintendo second, and third Microsoft? Or did you have the other way around? Post them in the comments below. Like, favorite, or hell, even subscribe if you enjoyed this video or the, any of the other videos like mine. Full detailed review of Microsoft, Sony, and Nintendo's E3 press conference, no, press conference and direct for Nintendo, and to go from it, this is Battlefield Channel 97, catch you guys later, have a nice, wonderful day.